Another Mark Miller property just hit Netflix. It's called Super Crooks. We're going to talk about it. I'm excited. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Happy Thanksgiving. I've got some family stuff to do. But first, I have to talk about this brand new anime series on Netflix based on a property that a lot of people love. Now, I'm not as familiar with these characters, so I was excited to dive into something new. Does it live up to the hype? We're going to talk about it. So luck has never really been on their side, but this crew of small-time crooks with superpowers recruited by none other than Johnny Bolt are rolling the dice on one last heist. Their target, a ruthless superpowered crime boss. Heh, <laughs> what can go wrong? Super Crooks is based on the graphic novel of the same name by comic book legend Mark Miller. This was a 2012 limited series run, and it's appropriate that this series feels uh, complete from beginning to end, right? A lot of these shows will end on this cliffhanger, even if they don't know if they're going to get renewed for another season. But I, I love how this story ties off as many things as they can. But we start with the lead character of Johnny Bolt, and Johnny is fascinating. The first episode gives you a bit of that backstory, and then we pick up in the here and now, where we assemble this team to pull off well, really multiple heists, but the end game right by the end of the series uh, in episode 13 and that was great but before we get there we have to establish who these characters are not only Johnny Bolt but what I believe to be the soul of this series and again uh, I won't be able to compare based off the source material but I would assume it's the same case there if this was a faithful adaptation the character of Casey, who is just outstanding, her presence will bring you joy, not only because she's a solid character in her own right, but that relationship carrying Johnny throughout the series and a very uh, adult relationship, right? You're going to see this is definitely not a show for a younger audience, right? There are adult themes, there are some sexual things, a lot of sexual things, a lot of violence, and uh, just in the first episode alone, the, the scene in the pool you see some crazy stuff going down, and then you start to meet the other characters. Not only the super crooks, who are more of the Robin Hood type characters, except instead of stealing for the rich and giving to the poor, a lot of this is kind of giving to themselves, and even though they're uh, doing something wrong, you care about them because the characters are so appealing and funny. I loved the uh, subtle sense of comedy in certain scenes. I thought it worked extremely well. But you also have the heroes who aren't as uh, mischievous as those in something like The Boys, but they're definitely not heroes who do everything right. They don't care as much about something like collateral damage as the ones that we would see in a Justice League or an Avengers, right? And then you had the villains, the super villains, the villains that don't care to murder entire groups of people. So these super crooks are not quite there. So they're not only having to look out for the heroes, for the uh, overall good authority, they're having to look out for the super villains. So they're trying to fly as far under the radar as they can. And even though they're not uh, the best of the best, right, they're still powerful enough and cool enough to make for interesting superpower beings on their own right. But story-wise, I thought that's what allowed this show to stand apart. Uh, you have great writing for the characters. And again, a lot of this is translating it into anime form, right, with that art style and animation that just looks outstanding. You get moments that look like they're pulled straight from a panel. Uh, the visuals spectacular. The score comes in, knocks your socks off. I thought the composer did a wonderful job here, but it's establishing a tone that sets itself apart even from something like The Boys and Invincible, where we see heroes doing things that we're not used to seeing heroes do, but also those very intimate character moments that uh, you know, even though, again, we are rooting for these characters even though they're not doing the best thing but you care because of that build up now my one big criticism with this show is the fact that you have our main two characters Johnny Bolt and Casey but everyone beyond that they don't quite get the development or exploration that I personally wanted that's a testament to their characters not only are they interesting in their own right kind of his crew beside him but they also have some really cool power sets right uh, Johnny Bolt with his electricity is my personal favorite just because of what he's able to do in the series uh, but just like healing yourself and things that we've seen before but not really handled in this way uh, which I loved and then they're going on their missions they're going on their heists it allows us to get kind of on board with their mindset how they're executing and then kind of how 
how it all culminates in the final few episodes, which I thought was just entertaining. Directed by Matanabu Hori, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and then Dai Saito, who is our writer here, and being able to translate something like this, it has to be a difficult task. And I, I really am curious to see how fans of this limited series respond to this. One other cool thing, though, about this show is the fact that it takes place in the world of Jupiter's Legacy. Now, we saw how that went on Netflix, and while I maybe didn't hate it as much as others, let's just say it wasn't what I wanted it to be, or really what fans wanted it to be. It's, it's a tough thing to do in live action, but now you have the opportunity to use animation and this incredible visual and visceral experience to bring these characters to life, but also bring us a couple of Easter eggs and moments for those fans to thoroughly enjoy, and we get to see how this plays in that world, and whether it be hearing a name or maybe even seeing a face, I think fans of these characters are going to love the way this goes, and it's just not your typical super-powered story. It's different. It's something that we haven't really seen before, and the style of it all is one of my absolute favorite looking, feeling shows of the entire year. It just evokes this great sense of comedy. It's sexy. It's fun. It's it's everything you wanted it to be. And I was uh, I was kind of blown away with how much I enjoy this. Again, it's Thanksgiving week. I'm busy. I'm like, all right, let's watch the screener. Let's see how this goes. I'm locked in for 13 episodes, and I'm thinking to myself, I can't wait to recommend this to you all. If you're not familiar with the source material, I think it's worth it if you're a fan of anime, uh, but also if you like these kinds of superhero series, you guys know I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. But if you are familiar, I think you're going to like it. I can't speak to the authenticity, but I'm curious to see how you guys respond as well. Before I give you guys my score, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having an awesome holiday weekend, and if you like this video, be sure to drop your thumbs up. That supports this channel. Super Crooks has every bit of style it needs to provide nothing but entertainment. The series is a visual feast, but Johnny and Casey steal the show, and animation has almost stolen the entire year. I'm going an 86%, which uh, ranks right up there with the best shows I've seen this year, uh, but also the best animated series, which, again, we've had so many good ones. Obviously, one of the best being Invincible, but this falls right in line with being something so spectacularly different. Man, I had a great time. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.